This will be lesson five of chapter three. And here we will talk about using masses with compounds. Previously we talked about using masses with elements and the number on the periodic table that we focused on was that atomic mass. So we said, for example, for carbon, the 12.01 is how many grams there are in a mole of carbon. Now, very rarely do you use elements in real life or in the chemistry laboratory. Usually you use compounds. Compounds are so much more common. And so we're going, in this lesson, we're going to do the same thing now with compounds. Recall that a compound is a pure substance made from two or more elements chemically bonded. So your very famous compounds are water. This is carbon dioxide, what we used in dry ice. This, we talked a few times about, is your regular table salt. And this is your table sugar. So these, these are the uh, few compounds that are very commonly available. And so we'll show you how to use these masses with compounds. So we should define a few things first, and let's define a molecule. Now, if you have a molecule, a molecule is an individual unit of a compound. So here, you actually have a molecule of water. This is H2O. And water, if you have a glass of water or if you have an ice cube of water, this actually is an ice cube of water. And an ice cube of water has trillions upon trillions of water molecules. And each molecule is simply an individual unit, a separate portion of the ice cube or of the glass of water. That's what we mean by a molecule. It's the same thing an atom is an individual unit of an element. So an, a molecule is an individual unit of a compound. So, so think of uh, what atoms are to elements. So atoms make up an element. Molecules make up a compound. And this is a good um, good definition to, to begin with in order for us to understand what we're talking about. Okay, so now we can talk about the mass of water. So the question here is what is the molar mass of H2O? Now this term molar mass means what is the mass of a mole of water? And then a similar question, what is the mass of a water molecule, a molecule of water? Now both of these numbers will actually be the same. In fact, the mass of one molecule and the mass of a mole of molecules, the number will be the same. The only difference will be the units. So in order to, water, recall, is H2O. So in order to find out the mass of that, we'll have to take a look at the mass of hydrogen and the mass of oxygen on the periodic table. The mass of hydrogen, if you take a look, is 1.01. The mass of oxygen, if you take a look, is 16.00. Hydrogen has one proton, oxygen should have eight. So we're actually going to use both these numbers and add them up. Now, because we have two hydrogens, the subscript two refers to two hydrogens, we're going to double up the hydrogens. So we'll have two hydrogens. So we get 1.01 .01 times two, or we can do it twice. And then we have to add the mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. Adding these up together, we should get ourselves 18.02. This should be a two. 18.02 for the mass of a water molecule. So 18O2. Now, if you have a molecule, remember a molecule is just an individual unit, a tiny little unit of water. This one will have the units of AMU, atomic mass units. Remember, we use this unit to uh, find the mass of an individual element or an individual atom of an element. So we can do the same thing for an individual molecule. If you have a mole of it, molar mass refers to a mole. Remember that one mole is a huge, huge amount. It's that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So if we're dealing with molecules, then this is how many molecules you will have. Remember, you can apply the mole idea to any concept. And so if you have this many molecules, then you can measure it in grams. So the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams. So think about this idea. Um, pause and, and think through this. But we're essentially applying the same numbers now to a compound. Having done this, we can go ahead and do some calculations. So the calculation here is how many moles of CO2, carbon dioxide, are there 
and 39.7 grams of carbon dioxide. Let's do a conversion problem like we've done before. And beginning with what we're given, in this case, 39.7 grams of CO2. And then we're going to multiply this by a conversion factor. We will put grams on the bottom here, as we've always done. And we'll have to put moles on top. The relationship here comes, again, from the periodic table. And one mole of any element is the mass from the periodic table. Now, we have to take a look here at the mass of carbon and of oxygen. If you take a look at the periodic table, carbon has a mass of 1201, and then oxygen, we've just seen this, has a mass of 16.00. So we'll have to add two oxygens and one carbon. So carbon is 1201, oxygen is 16.00. We'll have to do this twice for oxygen. For a total of 1, 0, in this case we have 12, 13, 14. Carry the 1, we get 44.01. And that will be the mass of carbon dioxide. So take a look, see what we got this from. We have two oxygens. That's why we have O2. We have one carbon here. And that's how we added them up. So now we can divide. You'll divide 39.7 by 4401. Go ahead and do this on your calculator. And make sure you get 0 0.902 moles of CO2 to be precise. So we have 0 0.902 moles of CO2 in 39.7 grams. Notice this type of problem is much more practical. If you know how much, how many grams you have of a certain compound, you can actually find out how many moles you have of that compound. So do the same thing. Go ahead on your own with uh, water. How many moles of water are there? And 88 grams of H2O. Go ahead and work this. Pause, pause the video. And let's finish up with this problem. This problem says, what is the mass of 2.5 moles of calcium hydroxide, of CaOH2? Now, we haven't seen compounds this complex yet, but uh, let's break this down. This 2 actually means that we have 2 of whatever is in the parentheses. So we have Ca and we have OH twice. What we'll have to do is we'll have to calculate the total mass of all of these. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and set up our conversion factor as we've done before, beginning with what we're given, which in this case is 2.5 moles of CaOH2. This, by the way, the name of this is calcium hydroxide. Eventually, we will show you how to name these different compounds. But uh, for now, this is good enough. So we'll multiply this by our conversion factor. And our conversion factor will have to have moles on the bottom, and we'll have to have grams on top because we're asking for the mass of calcium hydroxide. Now, the mass will take, again, from the periodic table. In this case, we'll, we will have to add up calcium and oxygen and hydrogen. So if you take a look at the periodic table for calcium, you should see 40.08, if I'm not mistaken, 40.08. If you take a look at the periodic table for uh, oxygen, you should see 16.00, and for hydrogen, you should see 1.01. .01. What we'll have to do is we'll have to add hydrogens times 2, we'll have to add oxygen times 2, and add calcium. So let's do that. Let's begin with calcium. Calcium then being 40.08. Oxygen, we have two of them, so we'll do 16.00 twice. And hydrogen will have two of them, so we'll do 1.01 .01 twice. And to get the total, let's go ahead and do this in a different color. It's getting a bit tight, no worries. We got 8 plus 2, which gives us 10. We'll have to carry the 1, so there's a 1 here. Then we have 6 and 6, that's 12, 13, 14. We'll have to carry the 1. We got 5, 6, 7, so 74.10. And this is the number that will go for the mass. Notice we simply calculated the total from the periodic table for the mass of this whole compound. It's a bit tricky because of this too, but 74.10 will go in here. And that will be the mass of one mole. Anytime you're pulling these numbers from the periodic table, these numbers will always refer to one mole of the compound. So all that's left to do is multiply 2.5 by 74.10, and we will call it a day. So multiply this on your calculator. And you should get yourself a total mass of 185.25.
using the right kind of significant figures, and throughout this whole lesson I've been using significant figures without mentioning it, we should have two significant figures. That is the lowest that we began with. So we will have to actually uh, round this to 200 and because we have a 5, the 9 goes up, so 290 grams. You can put calcium hydroxide if you will, would like at the back of it, but we get 190 grams. So go ahead and pause this video, rewatch it as needed, and um, try a problem of this type on your own. Here's the problem. Go ahead and tell, tell me the mass of 0.79 moles of MgCl2. And this will conclude video 5 of chapter 3.